new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. On the day Relief Society was organized, Emma Smith declared, we are going to do something extraordinary. We expect extraordinary occasions and pressing calls. Those pressing calls and extraordinary occasions presented themselves frequently then as they do now. One came in the October 1856 General Conference as President Brigham Young announced to the congregation that handcart pioneers were still on the trail and late in the season. He declared, quote, your faith, religion, and profession of religion will never save one soul of you in the celestial kingdom of our God unless you carry out just such principles as I am now teaching you. Go and bring in those people now on the plains and attend strictly to those things which we call temporal. Otherwise, your faith will be in vain. With great urgency, he pleaded with the saints, especially the sisters, to nurse the sufferers and feed them and receive them, saying, quote, Some you will find with their feet frozen to their ankles, some are frozen to their knees, and some have their hands frosted. We want you to receive them as your own children and to have the same feeling for them, close quote. My beloved sisters, this account might be likened to our day and those who are suffering throughout the world. Another extraordinary occasion touches our hearts. For I was unhungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. There are an estimated 60 million refugees in the world today, and half of these are children. We see many of them coming with only the clothes they are wearing and what they can carry in one small bag. يعني بيتنا ببرت الله راح والبيت في سنجار راح والحال يعني ما غلنا كل مكان إحنا يعني شو شيء سوى واحد يعني انتهي بهاي الحالة ما يظل يعني بعد معيشة. As members of the church, we don't have to look back far in our history to reflect on times when we were refugees, violently driven from homes and farms over and over again. طيب برمر ما دعنا رأي درمر بعوته قجة برمر حكومة دشمن يوكل قجة برمر حكومة عراقي عن قتلنا ده كريا قتل دو كا تربات تايمر رول فون فون درة علم فراي ناري ميليشيا ما ده فون درة علم فراي ناري بيشيشة قتلنا ده ده أسي أهان. The savior knows how it feels to be a refugee. He was one. As a child, Jesus and his family fled to Egypt to escape the murderous swords of Herod. And at various points in his ministry, he found himself threatened and his life in danger, ultimately submitting to the designs of evil men who had plotted his death. It is all the more remarkable to us that he repeatedly taught us to love one another, to love as he loves, to love our neighbor as ourselves, Truly, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to look to the poor and the needy and administer to their relief that they shall not suffer. The reality of these situations must be seen to be believed. 
It's been inspiring to witness what church members from around the world have generously donated to help these individuals and families who have lost so much. The church has provided shelter and medical care. Stakes and missions have assembled many thousands of hygiene kits. Other stakes have provided food, water, clothing, waterproof coats, bicycles, books, backpacks, reading glasses, and much more. Possibilities for us to lend a hand and be a friend are endless. Begin on your knees in prayer. Then think in terms of doing something close to home, in your own community, where you will find people who need help in adapting to their new circumstances. Like countless thousands before them, this will be a period, we hope a short period in their lives. Some of them will go on to be Nobel laureates, public servants, physicians, scientists, musicians, artists, religious leaders, and, and contributors in other fields. Indeed, many of them were these things before they lost everything. This moment does not define them, but our response will help define us. Millions of refugees worldwide, whose stories no longer make the news, are still in desperate need of help. You might help resettle refugees, learn their host country language, update their work skills, or practice job interviewing. You could offer to mentor a family or a single mother as they transition to an unfamiliar culture, even with something as simple as accompanying them to the grocery store or to school. Some wards and stakes have existing, trusted organizations to partner with. And according to your circumstances, you can give to the church's extraordinary humanitarian effort. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Recognizing our divine nature, President Russell M. Nelson urged, quote, Today, let me add that we need women who know how to make important things happen by their faith and who are courageous defenders of morality and families in a sin-sick world. Women who know how to call upon the powers of heaven to protect and strengthen children, and families. Married or single, you sisters possess distinctive capabilities and special intuition you have received as gifts from God. We, brethren, cannot duplicate your unique influence. A First Presidency letter sent to the Church on October 27, 2015, expressed great concern and compassion for the millions of people who have fled their homes seeking relief from civil conflict and other hardships. The First Presidency invited individuals, families, and church units to participate in Christ-like service in local refugee relief projects and to contribute to the Church Humanitarian Fund where practical. A First Presidency letter sent to the Church on October 27, 2015, expressed great concern and compassion for the millions of people who have fled their homes seeking relief from civil conflict and other hardships. The First Presidency invited individuals, families, and church units to participate in Christ-like service in local refugee relief projects and to contribute to the Church Humanitarian Fund where practical. With these truths in mind, we have organized a relief effort called I Was a Stranger. In all our prayerful efforts, we should apply the wise counsel of King Benjamin given to his people after he exhorted them to care for those in need. Quote, See that all these things are done in wisdom and in order. We know that reaching out to others in love matters to the Lord. Consider these scriptural admonitions. The stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Sometimes reaching out is inconvenient, but when we work together in love and unity, we can expect Heaven's help. We can be assured of Heavenly Father's help 
as we get down on our knees and ask for divine guidance to bless his children. Heavenly Father, our Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost are ready to help. President Henry B. Eyring bore this powerful testimony to the Lord. Heavenly Father hears and answers your prayers of faith for guidance and for help to endure in your service for him. The Holy Ghost is sent to you and to those you care for. You will be strengthened and yet inspired to know the limits and extent of your ability to serve. The Spirit will comfort you when you may wonder, did I do enough? As we consider the pressing calls of those who need our help, let's ask ourselves, what if their story were my story? May we then seek inspiration, act on impressions we receive, and reach out in unity to help those in need as we are able and inspired to do so. Sister Linda Burton asked the women of the Church to consider what if their story were my story? Their story is our story not that many years ago. Individuals from Scotland to Sicily have stepped in to every conceivable role. Doctors and nurses have volunteered their services at the point where refugees arrive soaked and chilled and often traumatized from their water crossings. As refugees begin the resettlement process, local members are helping them learn the language of their host country while others are lifting the spirits of both children and parents by providing, providing toys, art supplies, music, and play. Some are taking donated yarn, knitting needles, and crochet hooks and teaching these skills to local refugees, old and young. In winter, I met, amongst many others, a pregnant woman from Syria in a refugee transit camp desperately seeking assurance that she would not need to deliver her baby on the cold floor of the vast hall where she was housed. Back in Syria, she had been a university professor. And in Greece, I spoke with a family, still wet, shivering and frightened from their crossing in a small rubber boat from Turkey. After looking into their eyes and hearing their stories, both of the terror they had fled and of their perilous journey to find refuge, I will never be the same. Extending care and aid are a vast range of dedicated relief workers, many of them volunteers. I saw in action a member of the church who, for many months, worked through the night providing for the most immediate needs of those arriving from Turkey into Greece. Among countless other endeavors, she administered first aid to those in most critical medical need. She saw that the women and children traveling alone were cared for. She held those who had been bereaved along the way and did her best to allocate limited resources to limitless need. She, as so many like her, has been a literal ministering angel whose deeds are not forgotten by those she cared for nor by the Lord on whose errand she was. All who have given of themselves to relieve the suffering around them are much like the people of Alma. And thus, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not send away any who were naked or that were hungry or that were athirst or that were sick or that had not been nourished. They were liberal to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in the church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. We must be careful that the news of the refugees' plight does not become commonplace when the initial shock wears off and yet the wars continue and the families keep coming. If you are asking, what can I do? Let us first remember that we should not serve at the expense of families and other responsibilities, nor should we expect our leaders to organize projects for us. But as youth, men, women, and families, we can join in this great humanitarian endeavor. 
Each one of us can increase our awareness of world events that drive these families from their homes. We must take a stand against intolerance and advocate respect and understanding across cultures and traditions. Meeting refugee families and hearing their stories with your own ears and not from a screen or newspaper will change you. Real friendships will develop and will foster compassion and successful integration. The Lord has instructed us that the stakes of Zion are to be a defense and a refuge from the storm. We have found refuge. Let us come out from our safe places and share with them from our abundance, hope for a brighter future, faith in God and in our fellow man, and love that sees beyond cultural and ideological differences to the glorious truth that we are all children of our Father in heaven. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Being a refugee may be a defining moment in the lives of those who are refugees, but being a refugee does not define them. Like countless thousands before them, this will be a period, we hope a short period in their lives. Some of them will go on to be Nobel laureates, public servants, physicians, scientists, musicians, artists, religious leaders, and, and contributors in other fields. Indeed, many of them were these things before they lost everything. This moment does not define them, but our response will help define us. Verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.